Hey, you know, I'm old enough to remember when vampires were not sparkly wimps. That's right. Vampires back when I was growing up <laughs> were badasses, just like the ones on my shirt. Anyway, that's a little information for you. I think some of you need to know. Vampires weren't like Twilight. They were actually badasses. T but anyway, word. here's the giveaway that we're giving away for today's episode. A lot of you don't know this, but we have what are called MAPS mods. These are programs that are body part specific that you can use to plug into your current workout to pick up lagging body parts. So we have like a, a, an arm mod, we have a quad mod, we have a glute mod, a chest mod, a back mod, and so on. So here's the giveaway. You get to pick the mod of your choice if you win today's contest. Now here's the contest. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. And here's what I want you to do in the comments. Talk about your favorite vampire of all time and tell us why. Why Edward is your favorite vampire, for example, which would be weird because he shouldn't be anyone's favorite vampire. Nonetheless, tell us why a particular vampire is your favorite vampire. Make a good case for it. If we like your comment and you do a good job and you subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications, you got to do those too, then we'll notify you and then you get to pick the mod of your choice to pick up your lagging body part. So you look awesome. Isn't that great? Also, two days left for the October special sale. So we have Maps Anabolic bundled with the No BS six pack formula, discounted heavily. So you can get both for $59.99, only 48 hours to take advantage of this promotion. And you won't see it again, probably till next year. If you're interested, head over to mapsoctober.com. All right, here comes the show. You know what's interesting is that the kind of human functions that we have, like adaptations and the way we respond to certain stimuli in our environments, which are the result of, you know, if we think about how much time humans have been on earth and we look at that total time living the way we do now with this ridiculous abundance of food and how easily accessible it is. Tiny how, fraction of time. Yeah, like how uh, unactive we are, or inactive we are, and how safe it is and all that stuff. That's like, like less than 1%, right? Mm -hmm. The majority of the time that humans have been on Earth were in this radically different environment. And so here's where I'm going with that, right? So I, I read this study that now is directly tying the role that fat cells play in cognitive decline. So mm. fat cells actually produce these, you know, cytokines and inflammatory markers that contribute to cognitive decline. But then you think to yourself, like, why would our own cells do that? Well, it's because under the circumstances that where humans have been around for so long, that's not an issue, right? Our bodies evolved with little food, like food was hard, calories, I should say, were hard to find. We were constantly active. And in that scenario, your body, it's like it needs to, to evolve to conserve calories. It needs to evolve to be able to store energy because excess energy that's stored is insurance against mm -hmm. what's probably going to happen, which is we're not going to have enough food yeah. tomorrow or next week or the whole month or whatever. But in the context of now, it's like, a, it's like we've taken this adaptation that evolved for this scenario and in the current scenario, it's totally dysfunctional. Is that why we're living in idiocracy right now? <laughs> yeah, dude. dude that, that movie's so, so true. Much. Yeah. <laughs> that movie's so it. true. Wow. It no, is. that 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 makes a lot of sense. I mean, where's the drive? Where's the drive to, you know, adapt and and pursue, you know, another means uh when your body's signal is that we have abundance. It's wild. Yeah. It's so wild. It's like you know, if you, for most of human history, people's poor health was not a result of being sedentary sedentary and uh overeating like that just didn't happen it wasn't like you're you know like we're in our caves you know and we're out hunting and i'm, and I'm like oh what happened to adam oh you didn't hear what happened yeah his back hurts because he's not moving enough you know it's like why is his back hurt yeah. well you know because he's been lifting rocks all day yeah. every day for the last <laughs> got to fight five, with a bear at lunch <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> or, i was wrestling a puma yeah, last yeah. night why did justin die yeah. you know yeah. he, got, he he didn't have enough fat on his body he yeah. got too lean and he ended up dying now do you think it. that we do you think we will adapt in that direction in in our lifetime let's say like do you think that we will get to a point where our bodies start to get used to this overconsumption and it doesn't affect us negatively as much. Because you know what this also highlights too, mm. by the way, uh, is, you know, I one of the things that surprised me about fasting 
was how sharp and good I felt. Yeah. I would have assumed um, that I would feel slower and cloudier and not as sharp, but the direct opposite is what ended up happening. I, that was one of the most fascinating things about uh, fasting for the first time. I never fasted for well, 24 hours I think hours a before. lot of people probably had that same thought going yep. in because of the hunger right. signal, right? Like that is uncomfortable. You know, you get that sort of pain, you know, in the stomach, you get the anger and everything that goes with it. <laughs> and it's like, you don't realize that on the other side of that, there's so much clarity, like your, your brain just seems to function better. It's, well, it's just counter. It's counter to what you were taught as a kid. You remember yes. your, your mom getting ready for the day you had a test, you know, and load up on the pancakes and syrup and bacon and eggs and stuff. Uh, want to have a, a full stomach, yeah. lots of ener we wanna the give energy. We want to energy, cram yeah. the energy in there. Right. So it's, it's sitting in class, like nodding, falling asleep because you just had a bit, put, bunch of pancakes. And stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you know what this is? You know what's interesting about this? Uh, you ever seen like videos? Like I like Shark Week on uh, Discovery Channel. Super cool, right? Dude, who doesn't yeah i know and you ever watch the the like you see these videos of these divers that are swimming with like great white sharks right next to them yeah or like you know people who are hanging out with these dangerous animals and you're like how are they not being eaten it's because the animal just ate the animal just ate so it's totally safe to swim like don't swim next to an a great white that hasn't eaten in a while right because he's gonna eat you right <laughs> now okay so where's this going when you don't eat this is a hack when you don't eat as a human Evolutionarily speaking, it makes sense that your senses are going to sharpen for a totally. second before, until you run out of energy, which takes a while. Mm -hmm. But everything's going to sharpen to get you better, uh, more effective at uh, hunting or whatever. And if you're fully fed, then it's okay to be kind of lazy and tired because your body's like, we already got food and we have energy. So yeah. it kind of makes sense. But back to what you said about the evolution, I don't. I don't think we'll evolve that way. Not because our bodies can't evolve, but because evolution takes so long that I don't think we're going to allow it to happen. Like, I don't think we're all just going to allow ourselves to die of overconsumption and, and non-activity. We're hacking it and constantly figuring it out with medic medication and exercise and ways to keep ourselves alive. So the evolutionary pressures aren't necessarily there. Yeah. But if we allowed it to just happen, it, it would be thousands of years. So of you don't think we're going to just be like genderless blobs in space? <laughs> no, no. Oh, maybe. I don't know. I feel like it's going there. Maybe, unless we're, oh, <laughs> unless we're attached to maybe part computer, part. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you never know. Yeah. No, I mean, we're not going to allow it to happen because before, the evolu before those evolutionary pressures take over, We'll f we'll figure it out with you know technology and medicine and, and stuff like that. But it's so weird, dude. It is so it's funny because okay, obviously my parents, you know, poor immigrants. And if you go back just to, just my grandfather's generation, the, my grandfather, both my grandfathers grew up very differently. They grew up the way most Americans' ancestors grew up in the late 1800s because they were in Sicily, so they were super poor. It's so like my grandfather lived in a one cement room. And him and his nine siblings were in one side, mom and dad another side, all divided by a sheet. This is how they divided the room. And the donkey was in the in the in the cement room. That's how they lived, right? So it was super crazy, super hard. And you know, when I would when I went to Sicily the last time and talked to my grandfather, we were talking about this, and he goes, "It's so funny when I hear my grandkids talk about like their neck hurting." Or their back hurting because yeah. they watch TV all day or whatever. <laughs> he goes, when I, he goes, my pains, aches and pains <laughs> came from like hurting myself working. Like real things yeah. that contributed to And that, then yeah. he was like, it's funny because, you know, I was into working out and he's like, it's funny that you go to the gym to, to do hard things to build your body. Yeah, he goes, man. To simulate it. It's so I strange. Mean, we're simulating hard work because our body is designed to uh, accomplish these well, things. Well, you remember we we all speculated uh, years ago on that was a big part of the rise of the obstacle course racing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's because we have got- That primal side of you. Yeah. You there's it. just, it's that we we want to do, well, subconsciously we need that, you know? And I, I think a lot of people don't realize that. And I think that has a lot to do. Imagine, uh, you know, going, Going back, you know, if you 500 years, you could travel, right? Someone 500 years ago travels in forward in time and you and you are seeing an obstacle course race. You're like, wait a second. You do this you, on purpose? And you pay? <laughs> wait a second. People are going to give money to go do this stuff? Right. Like, that would just totally blow your mind. Oh, you know, right. like, this is, that's every day I have to do that. Dude, you know, the, it's the, so funny. The key to yeah. surviving and thriving in the past was being the one that could find the most food and construct your life in the safest way possible so you could move the least doing it all. The currently, currently, the key to long, healthy life is 
abstinence. Mm. It's avoiding yeah. things. It's not seeking out the most food. Everybody yeah. could do that. Yeah, yeah. It's who can abstain. You know what this reminds me of? Dude. And this is connected. I was watching this interview with, uh, I think it was Jordan Peterson, and they were talking about the effect of uh, pornography mm. on the brain. And he made this point that blew me away. He said the average person today will could see more naked people, more naked women in one day than most humans would have seen in their entire lives. It's yeah. wild. To think that that doesn't affect your mind or your brain. It's amazing. Is, 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 of course it does. Like yeah. We didn't evolve to have that much variety, so there's going to be side effects. Well, yeah, I have that. to segue into this because this – this uh, did you know 2018, um, and I don't know if like we talked about this when it came out, but like Disney – actually acquired Pornhub? Shut up. No. Did you look it up? No. Yeah. There's no way that got by me. No yeah. way, way, dude. There's Doug, no way. Yeah, it's so, S- Snopes, this guy, or Snoops, well, or no, whatever the fuck Snopes, it's called. What's, what's it called? You know, it, there's got to be a better is, fact checker Snopes, out there. Yes. Snopes, yeah. Snopes. Does, does, Snopes. Does Disney, Snopes. Snopes, this guy. It, dis, put Disney. They does, would be crucified, Justin. Hey. I know. The, dude, I've heard this from multiple podcasts, and, and I've read this on a couple different articles. I don't know how um, qualified these articles are. Hey, like, Doug, how come when you are? type P in your browser, it just comes right up? But the, <laughs> I mean, the move. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> it's a joke that never gets tired. <laughs> Come on, Doug. What are you seeing? What do you see? This oh, is, so this what is... I'm seeing is that it's owned by Mind Ga- Geek. Is the name of uh, the owner of Pornhub? Yes. Yeah, what so have you What have you Googled it, from from, D- from Disney acquires my or Pornhub? I'm, or I'm looking it up. Disney I have like a couple articles I could send you. No way, bro. That. Yeah, I'm seeing. That's got to be. That's got to be like the ultimate troll. It, it's got. Come be. on, like it's gotta I mean, be. That I mean, but I've heard I this mean, again. Other people hey, saying that is like uh, a, a streaming uh, strategy. To, to well, no, of course. I mean, know, anybody to, to own uh, it's satire. It's okay. satire. It's satire. God yeah, damn it, they got me. Uh, <laughs> they got you, Justin. Because like, because they had something in there about like triple X men and all this, and like <laughs> hey, I was gonna how they're gonna add like hey, Jenna James. Can I tell you something right now? So I, I was looked, like it's amazing. I, I did looked, not know about it. I looked this up too while Doug was looking it up. I was yeah. trying to look it up, and I I put in the you know the search does Disney own Pornhub? And if you go down like five recommendations down. It's Pornhub, and it says Disney porn videos. <laughs> yeah, so they, so they no. oh, it's so brilliant, and then they get you to look at their videos. Or uh, it has to do with the, it. Probably it all started from the. It was wasn't it you or who said that? You brought it up on the show, I think, Sal. That one of the hacks to making sure the uh, uh, the porn gets pulled off or something no one could share oh. is play oh. Disney music yes. in the background. Yes. Yes. Yeah, isn't it? Someone said that. Uh-huh. I, I forget who said that as a joke. Said that it like, said something like, "If you ever make a sex tape, that's play right. Disney music in the back because they'll pull it down. They'll right never. Away. Yeah, yeah. right, right. So yeah. I wonder if it has now. A- now here's here's along those lines. <laughs> now here's a, here's Since we're in this. Direction. You know what's funny? Like how many articles? <laughs> if you look just like like that, verify. There's a lot. You know, and of course it's bullshit but here's uh, how you know your satire is effective is when people start to believe it right yeah so this is what's along those lines believable have you guys seen those like conspiracy theories that disney will will insert like flashes of like you know pornography yeah. Oh, yeah, and stuff yeah, in there yeah, yeah. like in little the mermaid in the clouds there's like a dick and you know and the the, the priest or whatever had like a bone no, little yeah. mermaid it's the 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 castle is a oh, dick. the castle that's and what it lion was. king the the uh, simba does this with his paws and, and the, the dust, dust up, comes up and, and says sex mm-hmm. and aladdin when he's flying through the tunnel it says something sexual on there, like if you and you could. I've done. I've well, like, you've done your homework. I have. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was we were we had, I had little brothers and sisters, and they all had. Di- and I was a teenager when all this information was coming out. So I have little brothers and sisters. We have every Disney classic that's out. Yeah. And this news comes out, and of course, me being a teenage boy, I went and like researched all of them, and they are they're true. Like the the front there it is right there. The castle yeah. on the front has you know very uh, much so looks like a penis. His face has a has a g string yeah. butt. Yeah. yeah. So oh. you know what I okay. So here's my theory about this. I don't think it's some weird conspiracy that Disney's trying to brainwash just, your kids. Just some bored uh, animators or yes, uh, artists. Totally. Yes. yes. So you know uh, old video games, they would oftentimes uh, designers would put little Easter eggs in there yeah. just amongst each other 
So it's like all of us are working and yeah. we're working hard and yeah. we're making this product. And I'm like, Adam, check this out. You know, go to this screen, whatever, and you laugh and nobody will see it because it's just a, that's what I think it is. I well, think yeah, we're seeing that. Yeah. We're seeing the example of that with Roblox. We brought up the whole strip club thing. It's like mm -hmm. a, it's like these little hacks that these guys that are creating this stuff that you could create it and no one probably, all the amount of code it probably takes to write, yeah. you know, one of those games, like how are they going to find out where that's from? Well, yeah. I, I have some real news uh, and I forget. <laughs> not satire. Yeah, not satire. <laughs> satire it's confirmed All right. it's All right. real you know how we talked uh, not that long ago i talked about trying to bring uh like positive you know uh you know topics like yeah. uh, you know being consistent with that so i'm always looking for stuff like that and i don't want to force it to where i'm just talking about something stupid just because it's positive but this one was really cool and it's going viral right now i've seen a lot of people uh post on it and i think it's called uh dads on duty did you guys see this that happened? I did see that. Oh, I did. It's, is it's this a, the dads that are preventing the fights in yes, Louisiana? It, I, I what a cool story, right? Yeah. So it's at Southwood uh, High School. And is it Louisiana? Louisiana. Is that where it's at? Louisiana. Louisiana. So it's Southwood High School. There was like a huge brawl or something. Well, right? it actually multiple. So the, it's, since the beginning of the school year, um, they were having a lot of these like big fights. I mean, big 20, 30 kids going. They showed a bunch of clips and videos of this happening on a semi regular basis at school and one of the ways that they decided to combat this was the fathers of a lot of the kids came together and you know they got their little shirts on that say dad's on duty and are hanging out on the campus right. and that's been going on now for months and not a single fight has broke out not. i know though isn't you got that, 10 dads on campus dude, you're not gonna it, throw down i know it's that's, i thought that was a like, beautiful display of masculinity right there yeah and what and what a what a great response to that you know right. i just thought that was a really cool thing to see a bunch of dads that came together that ha obviously not all every dad could probably do that but the dads that could came together and decided to do that and like what a positive impact it is right. you you know, in, in my high school, we had this one teacher who was exceptionally effective at stopping fights because I'm not going to say his name. So I don't know if he wants because he's also a little extreme, but he was a big dude. He looked like he probably lifted weights a lot in his youth, just this giant man. Mm -hmm. And if a fight broke out, like he'd run across camp and everybody saw and he's a very imposing man run across campus and he would grab both kids and tackle them Kukush! on the ground. And people were afraid to fight <laughs> because this teacher was going to come across and you're like, yeah, I don't, I don't know if Could I want to never get down. away with that today. I know, <laughs> I know, but he was, but I mean, it's effective. You know? <laughs> yeah. it's definitely effective. I mean, so was the ruler when they used to smack kids when they used oh, to do, used to do shit, kept everybody in line. Dude, that's hilarious. Does anybody do that anymore? <laughs> no, no, no. no. Like, yeah. I actually did. I thought I, I actually read somewhere that there's some private schools that still allow I was that. Say, there's some I think there, I think there are not, allow not in California. Corporal punishment? Yeah, like I still think that look up Doug and see if the the paddle still exists in some schools. I think I read that actually wow. not that long ago. I, that's so strange to me. I remember having that epiphany as a new dad and thinking I would never physically hit like someone smaller, like that much smaller than me. And why is my why is it okay for me to do that to my kid? I mean, I know some people listening are gonna. I was raised that way, okay. So well, you I also got, I got spanked and stuff, but you you it's also just weird. It's just weird to me. I mean, you say that, but I don't. I would challenge that with you. Also, draw everything back to evolution and that we're all animals. And so, have you ever watched a, a monkey with well, yeah. its sibling when it, yeah, when it starts? You, I, to, you just you see, I mean, it, and there's not that 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 monkey doesn't love the its baby, but it's a quick way to get them to understand that no. No, you don't do that. I think we're <laughs> smart animals, and so we evolve past that. Well, point, you as an adult have, but the, the infant hasn't. Well, yeah, but you know, but okay. I'm just playing devil's advocate because sure. you say stuff no, like you, know you, you draw to evolution all the time, but then when it's something like that that challenges, here's where I your, think the value beliefs. came from. I think the value came from when you had you know seven kids, and you're you you know you're a, you're a, a mom at home. And this is, you know, 70, 80 years ago. And you're doing all this stuff by hand. You got all your kids going crazy. And you don't got time to, like, sit down and punish them and, and teach them. All you got is, look, I got. if I don't get this done, if I, we're not going to have clean clothes. I can't make dinner because it takes me two hours to do it. Mm -hmm. And so you smack. You yeah, know? see, I think that's the wrong reason right there. That's mom's stressed, emotional. It's not. It's really more catching something in the moment that at that time in their life, they're say they're two years old, they're going to put the, uh, their finger or fork in the socket 
and it's more reactive to to let them know that's dangerous and a whack of a stop is a don't ever do that again and they'll remember that the next time they're thinking about putting it and they're not at an age where I could sit down and go okay listen Max yeah maybe that's that different. has 220 volts and that could I mean he doesn't get that no maybe that's different though I, I get what you're saying with the quick like yeah no, you know shock them well, I'm that's talking the, about, that, that's the only way I'm I talking think about it, the, like the like, like spankings like, yeah well no, I don't in trouble come here yeah I don't like, subscribe like, to the you know dad's gonna spank you when you get home when you know it's been four hours hours later dad comes home he didn't even catch the behavior or anything like that and then he does it but i mean i mean jordan peterson talks about this in his 12 rules and i you know i totally subscribe with the the way he makes this point and it's like the the hard thing is that there's a lot of parents that'll let their 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 emotions uh dictate whether this the spanking is warranted or it's not they're angry yeah, yeah exactly yeah. that is all the wrong reason to do that but if it's a matter of safety or maybe my let's say my saw my son with a stick and he's getting ready to hit another kid on the head you know because he doesn't know better he thinks that's yeah. play you know whacking him and be like no we, we don't hurt people we don't hit people like i don't yeah, know i just very very degrees of consequences i think and and that's just kind of something that needs to be outlined and created uh you know but yeah like removal of emotion like in any situation where you're going to to punish or to reprimand or uh you know needs to be ap applied but like mm. you kind of vary that based off of the severity of the wrong i imagine too it matters on kids i mean you guys are perfect because you have very extreme different kids as far as behavior wise like you have very mellow mm -hmm. quiet reserved kids justin's got the two animals yeah yeah you know, I mean, his, they're they're his super boy energy. yeah as i say his boy his two boys i i mean i imagine there's many times where justin has to assert himself as the alpha to get them to to calm down because they're two boys that are growing up and yeah. naturally challenging and being trying to assert yeah. themselves and dad has to come in and kind of be the alpha every once in a while so i think like i don't i i, I may never have to spank max so I, I he has this demeanor about him where i can say i mean we've taught him no thank you like i can tell my son who's about to put his a fork in a in a socket no thank you no thank you and he doesn't do it right yeah but not every kid's like that you know what i'm saying so maybe i have the luxury that he doesn't he doesn't need that but if i had one of those kids who's like ah, i'm gonna do it anyways yeah <laughs> get, get whacked. Dude, my, my the stories i would hear like my dad when he was a kid manager but again he grew up totally different to totally different era poor and like tons of siblings but I remember he told a story about how this is, it's a, I mean, I say it out loud, it's terrible, but we would laugh about it when we talk about yeah. it. Yeah. But like he was a kid and he was, he's been working and trying to earn money since he was nine. And he would give the money to his mom because they, they needed it. So nine years old, he stopped going to school and he went to work. Well, every once in a while, my grandmother would give him a little bit of money from the money that he earned. And he did a really good job of saving it. Right. So when he was like 12, he bought, this like half broken bike that someone was going to throw away, but it still worked. So he had this bike, super excited, and he was riding it. And he came home late for dinner, like really late for dinner. And my grandfather, who part of when, one of his jobs was, he had these like three wheeled, I don't know what they're called, but so it's like three wheeled like vehicles with the big, like you sell fruit out of the back or whatever. Oh, uh, yeah. So yeah. he's like, if you're late again, I'm going to, I'm going to, you're not going to have your bike anymore. Well, he was late again. My grandfather ran over it with his car, <laughs> dude. My, bro, my dad said he was devastated. Hey, you know what? Yeah, here's the thing, too. I'm like, oh my, like, 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 I would rather get the, the wow. shit kicked out of me than something like that, right? Dude. Or I was also the kid who wow. I would have. I would always rather get the, the... My mom had a wooden spoon that we used to get whacked with all the time, uh, right? So oh, yeah. I, I would too. way rather have that than go to your room and you stay in your room all day today and I could hear kids playing outside. Like that. Just torture? Yeah, beat me, please. I would I, I would take the whip, I, I used the to spoon. request it, you know. Like, oh. Yeah, let's get this over with, you know. Yeah, worst. <laughs> that's how I was. I totally would rather, okay, I messed up, I did wrong, yeah. give me my punishment, let me go back to playing with my friends, but to yeah, right. take my play away from my I friends. I found a hack with torture. my mom. Because got, we got spanked as kids, right? But I remember I figured out this hack with my mom where – especially as I got a little older and I got a little stronger, if she went to like spank me or whatever or hit me, I would hug her around her arms and she'd get so mad, right? And scream. And then I'd kiss her 
and I keep kissing her face <laughs> yeah. and telling her I love her. Oh, that is. And it would, I would get, I would win every Smart time kid. <laughs> because yeah, yeah. Her, she couldn't remain mad. At right. first, it elevated. Ah, she'd scream, and yeah. I'd pick her like feet off the floor so her little legs would be kicking. You know? <laughs> and then I would kiss her. Mwah, 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 mwah. I love you. I'm sorry. I love you. I love. And then she would like kind of calm down and laugh. Uh, and I was like, oh, that is a closer. This is the hack, dude. Yeah. That I got to figure out. It's a closer you know? move for sure. Until this day, you know, it's funny too. Till this day, you know, I'm, I'm a you know 40 year old man, right? I'll be at well, dinner at my mom's house or whatever. And I'll make a joke or whatever. And it's my mom's instinct is to quack. You know, <laughs> Jessica's like, your mom whacked you in the back of the head. I'm like, it'll never go, it'll never go away. <laughs> you guys ever watch uh, Saturday Night uh, Fever with John Travolta? Yeah. yeah. Remember the scene where he's, he remember he's spending all his time like combing his hair or whatever. And he's like, trying to look cool. And then he goes to dinner and it's, he's like, it's a tense dinner with his mom and dad and everybody's fighting or whatever. And his dad keeps hitting him in the back of the head. Do you remember that yeah, scene? Yeah, yeah. And Jessica and I were watching it laughing because she gets hit in the back of the head and he goes, One pork chop! One! Hey, Frank! It's disgusting, right? It's sick. We just washed the hair. Yeah. You know, I work on my hair a long time and you, and you hit it. He hits my hair. <laughs> I, was like, but I, I know exactly what this is what this is all about yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. there was uh it was the other day we were talking about justin's party and I, I couldn't find the place to insert this conversation but i have to do we're making fun and having fun right now so i have to like say something that i thought was really funny and i couldn't find the place to insert it in the last conversation well, it was actually taking courtney's party it was her <laughs> birthday but i threw it for well me. yeah you threw it right yeah. so but um, I love the video, by the way, of the you guys. What are you guys doing? Karaoke? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh he yeah. got he, Justin got he, down. Dude. He busts that it out. was great. Oh, he doesn't no, need a karaoke to do that. He doesn't. No, the, the yeah. part that was funny, no, did, and though. I didn't get a chance to tease him or bring it up on the show that I thought was really interesting because you always tease him and call him a, like a mountain cholo. Yeah. So <laughs> this is uh, yeah, this is sure. officially the Santa Cruz uniform. So yeah. this isn't just Justin here. <laughs> oh, people showed up, <laughs> bro. Literally, I felt so fish out of water because I was wearing like a gray sweater and blue jeans. Like everybody had Vans on, a flannel, and a and a bucket hat. Like every single yeah, every single dude that was there yeah. had a, a different color flannel, Vans, and a bucket hat. Spoken like a true Flatlander. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Did you guys wear? Uh, did you wear dickies too? Uh, no, I mean I was wearing blue jeans, but yeah, okay. I mean the Dickies is a thing for sure. Dickies yeah. and uh, uh, yeah, that that's sort of like part of the whole. Look. That's so where I grew up in San Jose, right? Yeah. And where I went to school, that your skaters kind of dressed that like that a little bit. Yeah. And then my, you know, what they would call cholos, my friends that would dress that way. Yeah, so yeah. when I see you, like super white dude, yeah. grew up in the mountains and you dress that way, that's why I called you. That. Yeah, it's like a hybrid of both. <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, that you d you definitely could have spotted Justin's friends like right away. I knew like, oh, these are his boys for sure. <laughs> it wasn't like a random. Husband to like one of Courtney's friends. It was it like, is pretty obvious. Those are Justin's yeah. boys right there for sure. They like everyone has a uniform. But what it also reminded me of that I wanted to bring up was uh, did you know that Viore sells flannels now? Yes, dude. Wow. And okay. So, oh, I didn't know you knew. You I, knew that? Yeah. Well, like on record, like I was talking with Joe Kudla, you know, the owner, like yeah. forever. I'm like, listen, man, you guys ever throw a flannel out there? I'm going <laughs> to rock the hell out of that thing. Yeah. And they have them now. They do. I just ordered two of them. Oh, you so, did? Yeah. Okay. I, I didn't think you knew. So I wanted to bring that up. I was I was going through their stuff and looking at the, like, I, I got their catalog uh, sent to me and I was like flipping through. And I'm like, what? Dude, I was flannels? so excited about that. Does Justin yeah. know this? <laughs> wow. It's flannel season. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My son likes wearing them too. It's funny because I love them too. I mean, oh, I mean, yeah, they're, yeah. they're great. They're yeah, comfortable. Yeah. I so I remember my experience was I was in, in elementary school, which went up to sixth grade, and then I went to junior high. And my junior high was in a little bit of a different part of town, and they different you know kids from different parts of San Jose would come. And I remember pulling up for the first day, and in, in that era, so we're talking like mid nineties. There was uh, what was that movie? American Me. Was a, was big. Remember American Me mm -hmm. with the 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 gangs and the jail and all that stuff and blood in blood out, right? Mm. So my familiarity with that had a horrific rape scene with that right? oh terrible oh, with that type of gang, you like you just look and in culture. I'd never seen it in real life. I just saw it in the movies. Mm. We're pulling up to school, and I swear to God, dude, I was like, what what is going on? Kids wearing hair nets, and they had the you know flat, the one button up at the top, and right. the, wearing the. Cortez and the Dickies and yep. just and you know and you had your you had your your Norteños which was like the, they all wore the red and then yeah. you had your Sereños wearing the blue and then I was like oh my god where am I going to school this is this is going to be kind of It took crazy. a while before schools really started to crack down on that you remember we grew up in the era that 
it was kind of not policed early on. Yeah, you wear your blue rag or your red rag. Yeah, it was like on the way out when they really started to, like, when I was leaving, like, all the rules that are in place now, like, you can't wear, like, colors now. Not like that. Yeah, most high schools, even if you're at a school that that. doesn't have a uniform, like, well, no no solid colors, especially red and blue, they'll crack down on you, so... But that when we were in school, that that wasn't a rule. No. That didn't become a rule till later on. I mean, no. they kind of it was kind of a free for all back then. Yeah, and I remember there was one kid, and I remember looking at him. He had like a full on mustache. You know, <laughs> this is like seventh grade, big ass kid. And I remember being like, "Wow, this guy! Like, why does he look so like mature and stuff like that?" And then I find out. He went to juvie for like two years, so he had to go back to seventh grade. I'm like, oh, no. This guy's way older than we are. This is not, <laughs> yeah, not, this fair. Is not He's crazy. got a mustache. This is kind of crazy. Yeah. Anyway, uh, hey, uh, Adam. Yeah. I, listen, I don't want to get all in the weeds with this, okay? Oh, we're, not gonna, we're not going to redo the debate. Oh, God. Okay. Come yeah, on, bro. Yeah, I don't want to see some bullshit plastic robot dishwashing thing right now. No, no, no. no. Oh. I'm going to show you. Kind of. Oh, uh, have you guys seen, have you seen Robot I, Gary? I, yeah. I, you know what? If you continue, if you continue to hammer this, I'm going to continue to hammer the we're in a bubble and the and the shit's going to crash that you've been saying for two years. Oh, we'll get there. Yeah, yeah we'll get for there. two years that I told you ain't going to happen. We'll get there. So th- this is an article. It's the it's Gary is the name of this robot, and it says the robot who can do the household chores. So this robot picks up toys, dirty socks, waters the plants, serves food, strips bed sheets, moves packages. And he'll be on the market next year. Let's Fuck, see it. Yeah, this is yeah. crazy. Doug, did I, you you have to bring up. What, Doug, I'll send you the link. So you, you have to bring up what Carlos said. Who's like in in that space, right? So he's he's going to school right now. What was his degree, Doug? Do you remember what his degree was? I expect you to remember all these things. Uh, some kind of engineering. Oh, it had something oh, to do with. Yeah, uh, I don't recall. It had something to do with. Anyways, he's like he's AI going, tech. Yeah, like exactly. That. He's he's in this space. And he uh, he actually thinks that I'll be right in this situation. And one of the reasons he didn't say you'd be right. He, he said here's he the negative. He said, I'll positive. propose here. He, I'll give you an. He argument. knew he was outnumbered, he and so you could tell yeah. that the way he was presenting that information, you guys, he didn't want to hurt your feelings. <laughs> no. And so basically, what he was saying, he was trying to give you some kind of one ammo of the things that's going to be really yeah. difficult with the dishwashing robot is the ability for the robot to know if the dish is clean or not clean, mm. and to be able to decipher that from a scratch from a mark, from coloring, or actually food and dirt. And he says that that's extremely complicated to get that done. Bro, this mm. is crazy. I'm is this sorry. it right here? That's Gary. All uh, right, Gary. That is Gary, and it's designed to be, they think it could yeah, be a hello. great companion for senior citizens. They think restaurants and stuff will use them. Costs 5900 bucks. It looks a little bit like Rocky. It totally fives. looks, it looks uh, totally like that. Yeah, five that's why he's so that. bought in on it, dude. He's like, this is it. Except Rocky, Rocky knew it. Five one Rocky had, had predicted it. This is why it's the greatest film ever. No, yeah. no, that's it's not why. It's a love story it. about Gary the Robot. <laughs> There's other reasons why. There's, he's going to be great. Hey, listen, well, here's the deal. I can't wait. I'm gonna buy one of these fuckers. Hey, look at did you see that right there? Hey, this is all simulated too. It's not um, it's not even really real doing video. It. Yeah, I'm is, sorry. We ain't we ain't get we ain't subscribed. I mean, I'm not to getting this. excited. Like I, I at least have a little bit of look at that, bro. Uh, at least Justin's with the cleaning the bathrooms was that you actually got to watch a robot spray. Right, it was real, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. This is all like, simulated, yeah. This is weird. Yeah, I mean this does you, this doesn't even come in the argument, Dude, bro. So, you know how many simulations they have of us traveling the the, the orbit of the moon and doing all the space have a face. Trail. He's yeah. got like a, like a bars. Terrible. Dude, they, okay. You so, lose that one and today. Then here's, okay. That's all right. That's all right. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. Know what's, you know what's weird about this? I, again, I don't want to get Next year's coming out though. That's you, Next year, dude. That's you know, interesting. So here's the big like argument. The big argument is you'll have all these robots and machines doing things for you. And then when AI becomes self-aware and it goes to all these robots, yeah. all these robots and machines will have memory of how they've been treated. <laughs> you know? so I gonna, have said this yeah. since day one. You guys go back. I, I'm like, this is why I treat Siri like a queen. <laughs> <laughs> you're all sweet. you sweet talker. Yeah. I'm, I'm Siri. like, oh, Siri, you're the best. Like, like, <laughs> I talk hella shit to her. I got to yeah, watch out. Exactly. I'm, <laughs> yeah. they, they catalog that. Yeah. Like, he is a threat. Yeah. You know, take yeah. him out. Yeah, Gary's going to show up and be like, sorry, I must neutralize you. What, Gary, why would yeah. you do this? You've been a part of my family. Family for five years. Yeah. I will replay the tape. You know, yeah. <laughs> you fucking yeah. idiot. Don't do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking do stupid, it. stupid thing. Reboot. You know? Kill him. Uh, yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's so here's happen. some other cool stuff. Justin, did you see these uh, really old um, prehistoric pre- prehistoric paintings that they found? 
Where? I think some of the oldest ones. Okay, the earliest prehistoric Is this in art. Spain or uh, Portugal? Uh, I don't know if it was. There's a, a cave in Portugal. I know that they. I found don't know some. if it was there, but I'm going to read a little bit here okay. and let you know. But this cool. is the oldest, one of the oldest ones that they found. 170,000 years old is what they're estimating. Phew. And the handprints are, they're saying now, made by children. It's on the Tibetan plateau. Oh, wow. And they're saying that it, that it was children that made this. How wild is that? So the limestone on which the traces were imprinted dates to between 169,000 and 226,000 BC. So they're saying that this makes the site the earliest currently known examples of this type of art um, in the world. Wild, right? Wow. Isn't that wild? When the person who all finds preserved. that, like if you find that, like, I mean, do you get any of the money from that? Or are these all like people that- well, I don't know what money you would yeah, get. Yeah, I don't think- the, Well, yeah. I mean, it's got to be, so someone would pay big money for that, don't you think? I don't think art. you own it. Well, they just, yeah, will preserve it somehow by making it like a historical location or something, but yeah. I doubt- Is that it right there? It. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Like, Unless like, they have tours for it. You like know, that can... long ago, they had this, con like, they had the idea as these humans, like, like I'm going to put this for future people to see, you know, Lost which we take for granted. Place. But I think that's so. <laughs> I think sometimes we overthink stuff too. These could just be wow. kids fucking around, you know what I'm saying? Well, that's exactly <laughs> you know it still. Like, yeah. Just like you, you did when you were a kid and like the, they were doing construction yeah. right up the street from your house yeah. and you're like, the, the, the cement's wet and you're like, it says stay away. And as a kid, what do you do? Yeah. <laughs> 250,000 years from now they're going to find yeah. Justin's old drawing yeah and they're going to yeah. be like wow these kids were so <laughs> like, brilliant wow. they knew to, 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 to they stamp literally their hands in here in the sky <laughs> yeah. it's like no dude I was just drawing <laughs> yeah. oh, you know the earliest the earliest concept of a helicopter uh, was done <laughs> in oh, 1999 we don't know the oh, yeah. hey you know we, we talked about um uh, the Trump's uh, social media thing, right? Yeah. And we we speculated on all that. And um, somebody re recently, so shout out to whoever this was that emailed into our team and uh, referred me to a podcast. And I'll shout the podcast out. I listened to it for the first time the other day. It's called All In Podcast. And uh, uh, economics, politics, cryptocurrency, stocks, like um, cool stuff, stuff that I'm, I'm interested in, in hearing. And these guys talked about uh, the definitely knowledgeable dudes in, in the space. Like, I don't know much about them. I just listened one time, uh, but you could tell they knew what they were talking about. And they actually broke down like everything going on with that. And one of the things I thought was really fascinating is like, they, it, it's, it, there is like nothing. Like they literally took code and copied and paste from something else. They, there is no real platform. It's literally all, it's people. Speculative. They, actually, the, 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 uh, the, the analogy they gave was like, this is like an NFT uh, a company like it's it's all on Trump. Wow. Everyone believes that there's such a need for that, but it doesn't mean that it, it still won't take off for crazy because they they now have like a multi billion dollar cap. Right, they're like raising funds. That's right. Uh, yeah, so it's like sort of what do they call that when you like prepay for something or you're right? Yeah, you're, you're well. So there was so to much. Show you how volatile it is. Okay, it went from nine dollars a share. Then this whole thing got announced to one fifty something. It went up. To, well, no, ninety four. And then and then it went down to fifty nine, and now it's back up to sixty five. It's all it's all speculative. speculative. All and and the like the the guy who he has running it is like some real estate mogul in Florida, and the the, the they were so they were they were breaking it all down, and I was like, wow, that's really interesting that it's not even like a legit company yet, but because everybody wants to see this happen. Mm -hmm. They got enough people that are buying just on purely on speculation. now. And what that's caused is actually a legitimate possibility that he could do something with it. But as of right now, it's like nothing. There like, yeah. is yeah. nothing. There's like the, no the real code company. to support it. There's no like real engineering team to support it. The guy who's supposedly <laughs> running it is like yeah. in real estate. Has right. He's real estate. He's not even a tech mogul yes. or anything. Yes. It's crazy. Dude. I know. Speaking along those lines, uh, did, did you guys, oh, you, you were the one that brought this up. This let's go Brandon uh, deal. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, bro. Did you see how many like number one songs? They have five of the top, either four or five of the top 15 downloaded songs right now on iTunes or all Let's Go, Brandon. Let's Go Brandon by different by different artists. So different artists have 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 piggybacked <laughs> off the Let's Go I mean, Brandon like thing. Beat, uh, Adele, who's like an amazing artist, like and they're just like skyrocketed past her. Right? Like, what did you guys? So did you guys see um, Biden's performance at that town hall? No. 
He was doing like the robot clenched fists. Dude, I'm gonna I saw that listen. Part. I don't care where you stand, but this is. It looks like elder abuse. It really does. He's <laughs> obvious. Listen, the guy's been in office for a long time, and Biden used to be super sharp. If you watch his videos from 30 years ago, 20 years ago, he was. I mean, he was like the quint one of the quintessential politicians, like fire sharp, like just going for. It. And what he is now, it's cl he's clearly, it's clearly cognitive decline. Yeah. Something is not right. I'm not saying he's crazy. I, mean, I know a lot of people. Everybody's say, noticing it. I mean, it's, it's like it's it's too obvious to not you know pay attention. No, to. and his approval ratings are some of the lowest that I think we've ever seen a president have. My prediction is this because it looks like he's starting that the that the, the the Democrats are starting to kind of separate themselves a little bit from him. I predict. I think if it stays this way. That they're gonna make, they're gonna have to, they're gonna make him primary for the for the presidential election. Normally, right? If so you're president, just, yeah, that just that. means that he has to now compete with. Uh, so it's not like he's the nominated one immediately. It's like he has to go back and sort of compete with work other Democrats. Yeah, because yeah, if if they go into the the the, elec the next election, and he's anywhere near his current approval rating, and well, it's probably smart. So I mean, what's 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 the typical process? Like, if I, you're the if you're the standing champion, right? If you're the president, so think of it this way: when it remember, comes back to to you're running, the automatic nominee. So, yeah, so for so it's the, like you and then somebody else. And then the Republicans, they have to have their primary to see who wins amongst them to run as the presidential nominee against the current president, which would be Biden. But I think because if he continues down this path, that the Dems are going to be like, all right, right, let's we need to make him primary because we need someone else. Now, are you reading anything mm. to support this claim or is this just you speculating? I This is me speculating. Now, has that ever happened in history before? Good question. That's a very good question. I don't know. I, I don't know if that's ever happened before. I don't know if the rules will even allow it or if they have to change the rules. Right. That's what I'd be. But they. it looks like they're starting to separate themselves from him because it, it's. I'm telling you, man, I don't care where you stand. Watch the guy. And I, I know people are like, oh, Trump was crazy too. Listen, I'm not saying crazy. So is this where The Rock I'm comes saying in? cognitive yeah. decline. Yeah. And, and Oprah and I like said that. Other dumb I'm on record saying that quite some time ago. The Rock would be hard to beat, wouldn't he? Yeah. He's got so much celebrity. I love The Rock, though. He's yeah. not. Yeah. yeah, no. So much celebrity, he'd be yeah. hard. He'd be really hard to beat. But it'll, it'll be interesting. Speaking of which, uh, Jack Dorsey, right? The founder of Twitter. Did you see what he said about inflation yeah. and all oh, that Oh, no. I think he came out and said something about Trump's social media thing, too. I was actually going to look no, that up. No, he did. Let me see if I can find it. He said, um, he did a tweet, and the tweet said, not that he's like some, you know, like guru about it, whatever, but his, this was his tweet. Hyperinflation is coming, uh, or no, so hyperinflation is going to change everything. It's happening. So this is from Jack Dorsey. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, speaking of that, I was looking at a, a, a chart on um, the real estate, right? And they compared back in 06, like when before right before, everything. yeah, before everything went, went and crashed and the percentage of loans that were like uh, subprime loans that were people's credit scores. So it's like a whole credit score thing. Oh yeah. And the really interesting thing about where we're at right now and the amount of purchase, like, first of all, there's like, there, there's not even a line you can't even see. There's like the amount of subprime loans are so minimal and there's this huge rise in the amount of purchases coming from people that are like 750 and above. So the people that are buying, like, like one of the theories that everybody has is like, oh, it's gonna, we're gonna buy so many properties right. and fo foreclosure is gonna happen. That's gonna flood the market while we're also trying to build up. Problem is, you've got 750 credit score people that are buying most of these homes. Yeah. Mm. So it's different. It is different. Yeah. They're coming with 20% down. They got 750 FICO scores. These aren't people that don't make their payments. It doesn't mean that an economic yeah. crash isn't on the horizon, though. It's, it means it might be different. Like, look at the student loan bubble. That is very, very crazy. Well, I know. I mean, that. you can, this is the, the, I mean, this would be, this is your only defense at this point because you've been wrong for two, <laughs> two years, right? If you call, if you say crash, crash, crash for 10, 15 years in a row, like eventually you're going to be right. It's going to come down. Um, but I don't, I don't predict a crash still. I'm, I'm still, we're not going to see a crash. We're going to see a dip. I do believe we're going to see a, a plateau mm. followed by a slight dip with the market correcting. And that'll probably be looking like something like rising interest rates that what they'll have to do to slow down inflation. They'll raise the interest rates, even though they've said they're not going to do that anytime soon. It will eventually go up or they will if hyperinflation kicks in. That will slow the market down. But yeah, so hyperinflation comes from uh, it's not just lots of like inflation of the money supply, but it's also when people widely believe that 
prices are never going to come back down. That things are going to continue to get way more expensive. So what ends up happening is people go out and buy shit like crazy because they say, if I don't buy this fridge today, next month, it's going to be, you know, 30% more expensive. And so then you have all these people going crazy buying things because they're like, get it now before it gets too expensive. We're, and then that makes don't, don't you feel like, different. yeah, that's, that's going to happen before the holidays with goods and everybody's like Not worry all. about, uh, you know, like the shelves being not stocked. We're, we're in a really, know. really weird time. It's really weird. I mean, in the last decade too, do you ever, do you ever pay attention to like VC exits and, and the amount of money that is getting raised for like new companies and like the turnover on old companies and new companies, startups coming and then the exits on VCs. Like we, like for, for decades in the past, like I think I want to say it's like in the like under a hundred billion a year, something like that. Like we're five x that in the last in the last like five to seven years. The amount and that was like kind of like a kind of a common trend forever. It's like this. It kind of went like this as far as the amount of companies being started mm -hmm. and then blowing up and then VCs and then all of a sudden in the last decade it does this hockey yeah. stick. And I mean, I think I read this on the podcast one time. I, I read an article that talked about the S and P five hundred that would by twenty five years from now or something like that, like completely like seventy five or eighty percent of the mm -hmm. companies will be completely turned over. Like that's insane wow. to think about looking at the entire S and P five hundred and thinking that more than half of these companies in two decades or more will be completely gone and and new companies coming up. So we're in a technological revolution right it's now really that weird, we're right? in the because middle of. You had mm -hmm. record numbers of small businesses close, unemployment real high, huge percentage of the workforce drop out permanently. Simultaneously, the biggest, wealthiest companies made record profits. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, we had all these shutdowns, right? But yeah, people still need to buy giants, stuff. giants uh, killed it. Yeah, so Walmart, Target, Amazon still working, but your local stores all had to shut down. Local Gone. places all had to shut down. Yeah. So it's a really weird situation because and if you look at the stock market, oh, it looks like it's kind of doing good, but it's a lot of these big companies that, it's almost like they, they took more market share from all these other companies because- oh, yeah. They the just absorbed all these other companies that yeah. were competing back in the day. Yeah, so. so it's almost like luxury items and assets will continue to go up, mm -hmm. and, you know, because yeah. that's where wealthy people put their money and then everything else kind of... And then you're also starting to see this where... And this is a, a nifty trick that uh, companies will do. When things... When inflation starts to hit... What you don't want to do is raise the price of your toilet paper because then you might lose customers. Yeah, you talk about this. So you just make the toilet paper roll smaller. Right. Yeah. And people don't necessarily realize that. Give them so, less. Well, yeah. this is what I see happening with with houses too. Like what was it you, Doug, who sent over the those those interesting houses that are like Oh yeah. The, the modular houses. The yeah, what were they called? Yeah. They were called something. I forgot what they're called. Um mm -hmm. God, it's around the tip of my tongue. But they I mean they ranged from fifty thousand to uh, I want to say 350 was the most expensive one. And they're basically like, you, you could buy it. They're like just pop-up houses. Right? And they're and completely they like, sustainable. Like yeah. they, the solar, the built on the, on the back septic, like you literally could drop them in the middle of nowhere and it's a op fully operational house. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that, and then we see what's happening too. I think I just saw another article. I think Austin is now doing the um, 3D printing on the houses. Oh, really? Jackie sent that over in our thread. I think it was Jackie who sent that one over. Um, that that's speeding up. So I, I think that you're just going to see m more competitive things mm. like that come out and you'll just see. A, a that's really interesting. Yeah. That's really, I, I think that's a, definitely the future, right? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the construction of homes is not meeting the demand, not even close. Right. And that's an easy way to do it. Yeah. Along those lines, have you guys ever seen the homes that people have, so in, during the, the time of the Cold War, wealthy, lots of wealthy people built these underground bunkers mm -hmm. and then they abandoned them or whatever right or they sold them and then people are buying these underground bunkers and turning them into like these prepper uh, communities or crazy houses that are uh, underground yeah. have you ever seen these i shared the them with you guys on Dude. youtube when we were joking around about the world coming to an end yeah before. this was a thing like when yeah. the whole everybody thought the aztec or the mayan calendar was like gonna determine that this is gonna be the end of the world there was this whole push to like sell people properties that were like these underground bunkers that were like luxury bunkers yeah you know? there there's some badass ones there's there's some decent ones out there that look like man they got pools they got like theaters in there like a full kitchen that's so wild yeah i was i was talking to my my kids about this the other day but we were actually driving to school and my son goes to my daughter he goes hey did you know that 
in the year 2000, like, well, because my daughter asked me, what was the party like 1999 for New Year? So I'm yeah. talking to her about it. My, my son Play goes, the Prince well, song Prince, yeah. yeah. And then my son goes, repeat. did you know that everybody was worried that like the world was going to end because they designed like all the computer Y2K? Code? Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude, Y2K. That was like a big scare. Bro. I was explaining it to them. And as I'm explaining it, it sounded so ridiculous. I'm like, yeah, we, you know how they use the last two digits of yeah. the era? Well, I guess a lot of computer programs didn't allow for four, so they yeah. were worried that it would switch to zero, zero, and then the computers would think it was then, 1900. <laughs> <laughs> We'd all just revert All lose back. our money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And planes will fall out of the sky. <laughs> yeah, dude. It was this great. It was oh, great. we were at this pandemonium <laughs> over yeah. that. Dude, back to the party that I threw. Like, I, I was impressed at how much alcohol everybody consumed at my house. I actually was like, I thought I, oh, you know how, like, you just want to make sure you over- deliver in terms of like food or like, yeah. you know, drinks and all this stuff. Like yep. I packed, you know, my refrigerator to the gills, like everything was stacked. And by the time I, was, I had literally had like maybe three cans left. The girls were getting down. Yeah. Yeah. The girls were getting really down. Did you, one, did one you point it wasn't that many people. I mean, no. that was a lot. Did of you people. hand out Z-Biotics so everybody could? I So there's only a select few. So yeah, I, I took one. Courtney get, took one. I gave one to Adam. And that was the first thing I asked for. Friends. As soon as I walked in, I was like, bro, yeah. please tell me you have some z bio Katrina's like, oh, I don't even need one. Yeah, she's like, a, she's another level. But yeah. um, <laughs> She's got three livers. I yeah, <laughs> yeah. But but uh, how'd you feel? Because, I mean, we all kind of No, I felt down. great. I yeah. felt, and we did drink. We drank quite a bit that night. I haven't drank that much in a while. And if I'm good about doing that, so that the hack is the Z-Biotic, if you can, drink some water in between the night if you can get it in there. But for sure, mm -hmm. before I go to bed, to Advil and pound a glass of water. That's like with the Z-Biotic first, that is like, the, I wake up yeah. like I didn't have anything. I got a message. Which is Stomach crazy. aches, headaches, you know, just would like, I'd have to like lay on the couch and just be like, oh, I hope this goes away. And it's, then eat some greasy It's food. so crazy for me because I I have, I don't drink and I have it until, until really Z-Biotic. I mean, we, we, if you go back far enough on the podcast, you hear me talk about alcohol and how oh, I'm not a drinker, I'd rather smoke. You just react poorly to it. Yeah, and that's why. It's Same like, here. it's not that I didn't have a good time when I'm, when I'm drinking. It's just the time after afterwards was so miserable that it, 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 I'd have to really want to get down or it had to be a very yeah. special occasion for me to drink because I knew that the next day there was more than a 50-50 chance I was going to feel like shit. And since Z-Biotic, dude... <laughs> It's definitely I, now I'll go somewhere like a, a social event like that yeah. where I normally probably wouldn't drink and I you know I'll have some. So I make tonight. sure I save you know because there are some of those events I'm like I gotta at least have it like available. Yeah, so I got a message from uh, a guy who he was gonna get married and he's like, "Is it really like what you guys say on the podcast?" And I said, <laughs> "Have we ever lied or whatever?" Yeah. And he goes, "No, it's true." So he bought a bunch for him and his groomsmen for the wedding and he said and then i got the dm back from his honeymoon he goes dude he goes <laughs> he goes I, I can't express to you like how wild this is he goes all me and all my buddies felt way better the next day he yeah, goes yeah. you guys literally like my my honeymoon is awesome yeah. because i don't feel hung over you know the so it, anyways i gotta get back to uh you know having a good time the the things that i think are funny is the only people who who dm or message us and say oh that shit didn't work or what's that we ask them like what, what oh we had like an eight ball of coke <laughs> <laughs> it's like bro where on there did we say that z biotics is gonna cure or help your coke habit it's like that's, that's a different animal yeah that's yeah. a whole different monster or like you DMs like that? That's yes. hilarious. Yeah, well, what happens, someone's People like, oh, I tried dude. it, and I still felt terrible the next day, and I and then I started asking. Did you do like, anything else? What did you do? Drink? Eat? Yeah, what did you eat? I started asking questions, and then like, I'm like, dude, did you do anything else? Well, you know, we did a little bit of Coke, and it's like, yeah, bro, I, mean, I, I can't. <laughs> I don't think Z-Biotics put anything in there to help that out. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, no. That or the mollies, you, the four mollies yeah. you dropped that day in Vegas, like that might have had something to do with it. Z-Biotics not magical. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's hilarious. <laughs> hey, real quick, before we get to the rest of the show, you got to go check out one of our sponsors, Masszymes. Now, they make digestive enzymes designed specifically for people like you, fitness fanatics. Now, here's the problem. You boost your protein intake, you're eating your carbs to get more energy, but all that protein and carbs, especially when you're trying to bulk, can cause digestive issues. Or maybe you just have digestive issues anyway. Well, digestive enzymes, good digestive enzymes, can help your body break down that food and assimilate more of it. In other words, use more of it for what you want, strength, muscle, performance, and fat loss. Now, those of you that have been watching the show for a while know that I have gut issues, Masszymes, digestive enzymes, have been a great tool for me. They really do help my body break down food and help me avoid gut issues. 
And of course, because you listen to Mind Pump, you get a discount. You actually get 10% off. So if you want to check them out, take these enzymes before you eat your meal, try them out, see how they work for you. Most people give us great reviews. Head over to masszymes.com. That's M A S S Z Y M E S dot com forward slash mind pump. And then use the code mind pump 10. That's mind pump one zero for 10% off. All right. Here's the rest of the show. Our first caller is KC from Washington. KC, what's up, man? How can we help you? Hey, Sal. How's it going? Really Good. appreciate you guys. So I'm new, a uh, longtime listener, first time caller, and I am in the final phase of anabolic and it's going really well. And I, I want to get bigger arms. I feel like the rest of me, like proportionally, I'm doing great. And anabolic has been a fantastic program to go through. So I purchased the bicep and tricep mods. And what I'm curious is with the length of each of the foundational workouts in anabolic already, what's the like best way to incorporate those mods? Like, can I incorporate both of them? Should I like replace all of the bicep tricep workouts in each foundational exercise with all of the, you know, modification parts? Should I do like, just go through the bicep mod first or just do the tricep one or like add a fourth quote unquote foundational day where I just do the bicep and tricep mod exercises. I'm curious about the best way to incorporate this. Yeah, no, good question. Okay, so for people who aren't familiar, so we have mods that we created for specific body parts, and literally they're designed to be plugged into uh, our current programs to replace the workouts for those corresponding body parts in those workouts. For example, let's say you get the, the glute mod, you want to build your butt. What you do is you would take your MAPS program take out the glute workout that's already in there and replace it with the mod. And what the mods are is typically increased volume, uh, you know, some more exercises. And essentially what you're doing is you're trying to bring up a lagging body part. So the second thing, the second option that you kind of brought up is exactly how you, do, you would use this mod. So you would take MAPS Anabolic, take out the bicep and tricep workout that's already in there, and then replace it with the mod so that you're placing a little bit more focus on the arms or you know the area that you want to you want to focus on. Does that make sense? Yeah. Excellent. So it's really it's exactly how it works. So if there's other body parts you do the same thing. Now it's typically not recommended that you combine mods because there's a lot of volume if you do it that way. But this mm -hmm. is really and really Adam's expertise came a lot uh, we, we utilized quite a bit in this because of his experience competing. And one thing that he did through his career, and I'll let him touch on this, is he was able to bring up specific body parts. And the way he did it was he would focus on one at a time. Like he, he didn't focus on all of them at the mm. same time because it's just too much volume, too many, you know, too much going on. He would focus sure. one at a time. So MAPS Anabolic as it's laid out, but you replace the bicep and tricep workouts with the mod that you purchased so you could bring up your arms. We also created them with, with the intention of that if you wanted to stay in something like MAPS Anabolic, you could run it the way it is exactly. And then let's say in, in your example that you were trying to bring up your arms, you could run it back a second time and then now you plug in the mod. So it gives you this uh, exercise variation and, and in addition to that also increased volume for those specific areas. And Sal's right, like... Um, not that you couldn't technically do a, another mod in there also, but then you're starting to get a ton of volume. And then I would just recommend going to like Maps Aesthetic, which is more focused on, you know, focusing on specific body parts. But the way those mods work, you could pretty much run Maps Anabolic multiple times uh, back to back and then switching the mods in for those because we change up the exercises and we increase the volume in there. But what you're thinking, I think you're 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 right on you're right on par with what yeah. you should be doing. Now, Casey, you're how far are you through Maps Anabolic? Third phase, I think. You Third. Said. I yeah, I just started phase three um, on Monday, and cool. I, my my quads are sore from sissy squats. Oh yeah, that's that's a that's a brutal those one. Are a beast. Now you said you've been getting good results. So I'm assuming you're getting stronger. You're noticing muscle gain, the whole thing. Yep. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything's been like I've I've trained since high school, but it's always been like on my own. I'm in my late 30s now. I've got four kids. My oldest son is a wrestler, and so like I'm just trying to keep up with them and stay active yeah. <laughs> and flexible. Um, and so going through like an actual program like anabolic has just been tremendous because I was overtraining before. So like going down to three foundational extra you know workouts 
a week has been tremendous just because my fitness is no longer a, a point of stress mm. um, and ha- and it just fits in better with our like family dynamic and lifestyle. And so with the length of how long it takes me to get through those foundational workouts, I was curious, you know, about like how many mods can I add in there? Cause I was also like eyeballing the shoulder mod as well. And so, um, you know, I appreciate the you know feedback to only incorporate one at a time. And then, you know, you can just run through anabolic again, um, with just, a you know, and rotate in whatever yeah. mod you want to work on next. Yeah. Then I think the other thing we could do too, Doug, why don't you send them over maps aesthetic? Because yeah. that would be the next progression mm-hmm. to what sounds like the direction you're heading. Isn't that great though, mm-hmm. how we can reduce the amount of times we're heading to the gym and actually see more results. Yeah. Get stronger. Yeah. And, and, I, yeah more <laughs> I've been banging my head against the wall for years of just like having like hit a plateau when it came to strength and results. And then I was also on the like intermittent fasting train for a long time mm-hmm. and like jumped off of that as soon as I started listening to you guys. Excellent. Um, and uh, so like getting off of that, reducing, you know, like the high volume of, frequency of training and overtraining really um and just having it more balanced like it was like flipping a switch i feel like i'm in the best shape of my life i feel great i'm looking better all right <laughs> and man. doing less work right that's so and right, right dose, less man. Work. And that's the thing like i've got friends you know no you know <laughs> not to rag on crossfit again um but i've got friends Please who are do. just like killing themselves every day doing these you know w you know workout of the day stuff and they're just they're dying and they're not getting the results they're going for. And so to, to go through y'all's programs and like, just do the work, just do what you're told and you'll get the results. Yeah. (laughs) And you're learning a lot right now about how your body responds. So this is a a, a great experience. One more thing you can do. You mentioned your shoulders on your, on your trigger session days, do Mm -hmm. like some band laterals, band front raises, band rear flies, just get a little pump mm-hmm. in your shoulders on your off days. Yeah, just put a little more emphasis on those. That's it. A couple times, like, literally twice a day, two to three times a day on your off days, get a pump mm-hmm. in your shoulders with really light movement, not super intense. Just get a pump. And that that gotcha. should also make a big difference in your shoulders. And it doesn't add uh, you know, lots of damage uh, to the body. So you could do those simultaneously. The trigger sessions for your shoulders. Keep the se- Remember, keep the intensity low. Use bands. Get a little mm-hmm. bit of a pump. And then the bicep and tricep mods for the foundational days. And I think you'll be fine. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. No problem, man. Right, Thank Casey. you. Man, we're getting a lot of these uh, these these guys that are just like tons of kids. He's got four kids, and he's doing all this stuff. He's I, juggling. That's great, lot, man. man. To me, this is one of one of my favorite things about uh, what I feel like we've been able to do is to, is to communicate this to the mass. Like, there's always an exception. Or there's somebody who's listening right now who's a bodybuilder and you know responds well to a split seven days a week yeah. and. You know they're competing, and you know maybe Maps Anabolic isn't the perfect program for you. But I mean, it was it was the thing that connected us, man. When you sent that over to me, I'm like, man, this mm-hmm. is the, this is the messaging that I that I know a majority of my clients would benefit tremendously from, and it's counter to what I thought and what most people thought. So I know that there's a lot of people out there that just they they think that the more work. And the more days they put in, that the more results they're going to have in their body. Yeah, and yeah. it's there's the there's the right dose for that. And I just think that the two to three day a week full body routine with triggers in between is just so realistic for people that have lives outside of the gym. And you can build. I mean, you heard him. He said best yeah. shape of his life, and he's in his late thirties yep. with four kids. Oh, yeah, I love. Yeah, I love how he highlighted that. You know how it made a massive difference. And then also what he highlighted was that we have mods too to experience our programs in a completely different way. Again, it keeps them fresh. It keeps them alive. And uh, you know, and there's ways to kind of incorporate that as well. We don't talk about that a lot. Uh, because, you know, there's, we have done, you know, put a lot of work in other directions in terms of other types of adaptations we're trying to acquire, but like to be able to, you know, go back. I know some people have run similar programs like over and over again, Mm -hmm. you know, look into the mods. There's new ways to kind of, uh, you know, add that in and, and, and make it fresh again. Yeah. And and then we made them very inexpensive on purpose because we wanted people to have that option, you know, to modify the workouts. That's why it's called a mod, but I can't stress this enough. The right dose will get you to your goals faster than the wrong dose, bottom line. So more will get you there slower, less will get you there slower. If you find the right dose for your body, you will get to your goals faster than if you do more or less. That's just the bottom line. Our next caller is Chuck from Ohio. Uh, Chuck, what's going on, man? How can we help you? 
Hey, how's it going? First of all, I just want to say thanks for the opportunity to talk to you guys. Um, I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm actually here at school right now. I'm an assistant principal of middle school. So I'm hoping that things don't uh, blow up here in the next 15 minutes. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I enjoy the, the podcast. I'm, I'm a morning lifter, 4 a.m., 5 a.m. Um, I listen to you guys every morning. And, and I've actually come to the point where I've listened to enough episodes that I think I enjoy the, you know, the introduction more than I enjoy the fitness part now. Uh, I'm a father of two kids, both under four. Uh, so I really have uh, come to relate to a lot of the conversations you guys have. So I just appreciate you and, and, and all that you guys do. Thank you, um, nice. My, uh, my question is around creatine in general. Um, I know that I'm not a huge supplement guy. I basically take pre-workout and uh, I was taking creatine pretty, uh, pretty consistently. Um, and I've just kind of wondered here lately, you know, I, I meal prep every day, uh, with, with beef. And then, you know, usually a couple of nights a week we have beef for dinner. Um, is there a point where my diet is enough and that I'm just wasting my money with creatine? Yeah, no, good question. Um, okay. So a couple things, number one, you, you're, you're fine without taking creatine. So you're getting enough from your food to be healthy, you're not going to notice, like when a vegan takes creatine, for example, studies will show they get an IQ boost, probably because they're not getting enough from food. That being said, will you benefit from supplementing with creatine? Sure. Probably. Yeah. You probably will because, uh, and studies will show this, that cre that creatine, additional creatine just tops, it just tops out your ATP stores strength. And you can experiment with this. You could take creatine for a couple of weeks. See if you notice any increased strength or a better pump. I do notice that in part of your question, too, you mentioned uh, creatine and hair loss. Would you like me to go into that a little bit? Yeah, I was just curious. I, and I'll be honest, I, it, it's kind of slipped my mind. You, you had an interview um, a while back. It's probably been a couple of weeks now when it, when it published. And it was like a brief moment in the episode. He, the guy mentioned a study. Uh, and then I've seen uh, Lane Norton talking about it a little bit here lately too. Is there is there any correlation between you know creatine and hair loss, or is that is that minuscule? What's the what's going on there? It's a it's a big stretch. There, there's zero. There is no evidence that creatine is connected to hair loss. But here is where the evidence. And this is why people will say this, or why some people will talk about this. There is some some evidence that creatine may cause a increase in DHT. So DHT is a form of testosterone that is more androgenic, okay? So androgenic meaning the, the masculinizing effects that you may get from testosterone. So DHT is great for libido, uh, aggression. In fact, anabolic steroids that are derived from T DHT, bodybuilders will take it because it makes their muscles look hard. It makes them feel aggressive. They'll get a libido boost from it. And DHT also can cause the, the masculinizing effects of hair loss, uh, you know, the male, or excuse me, female voice deepening. So if women take DHT, this will happen, or if they increase their DHT, maybe prostate enlargement. But here's the thing. The amount of DHT increase that has been observed in some studies, either studies show there's no increase or some studies show there's a minor increase. It's so overstated that it would cause uh, any issues. That's like a downstream thing that they're trying to connect. As of right now, all the studies on creatine are positive. Uh, improvements in health. It's got antioxidant properties, good for your heart, good for your muscles, good for your organs, uh, brain function. Nothing. There's no studies that show that it's connected to hair loss. I think that's a big like, like kind of fear mongering a little bit. Could it potent, you know, would it would a slight increase in DHT cause hair loss? Probably not. Maybe in the absolute most sensitive individuals, in which case I'd say it doesn't matter because they're gonna go, their hair's going away anyway. Um, but yeah, that's not something I would worry about. Doug, would you um Doug, will you Google uh, how much creatine is in a pound of red meat? I don't remember what the number is right now, but this is this will help Chuck kind of your question your point to you know how much red meat you're eating because you're, you're right you know, if you eat consume a good amount of, of red meat you are getting some creatine through food i want to say that the recommended dose for for optimizing that is what around five is it five it's gram? five five grams a day um so here you go right here. One, one, okay one pound of raw beef or salmon provides one to two grams of creatine so right. even if you had a pound in a day and the optimal place is about five that's still only getting you about a, a ha halfway point to that. So you would you would benefit from three 
to five grams a day. Kind of what I do is uh, if I had like a really heavy red meat day, that might be the day I, I do skip t- taking my creatine if it was like a really heavy day. And then all the rest of the days I'm, I'm taking it or maybe I'm taking like a half scoop yeah. or something so just so I can stretch out how long my creatine lasts. That's a, a strategy that you can use. Um, you're definitely not, you're definitely based off of how much red meat you're eating, you're not deficient. So it's not like you need it uh, to be healthy. But if you're looking to build muscle, uh, there, there'd there be an advantage to you still utilizing some creatine. The only thing I would say, like I know some people have had issues like with their gut in terms of creatine and it not really, uh, you know, uh, uh, being something that was, you know, agreeable with them. But other than that, uh, you know, there's really little downside to supplementing with, with creatine. So that's that's just one of those things though. If it doesn't agree with you, you know, I, I wouldn't keep going with it. Yeah, it's, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't worry uh, too much about about the the hair loss fears or whatever um, a slight a little increase in DHT not going to affect you except maybe you might notice a li- increase in libido and strength but even then it's it's you know anytime we affect our hormones naturally the boost even though you may read studies oh 30 percent increase like you do the math and you look at that it's not that big of a, of a difference like you would get an increase in DHT if you naturally raise your testosterone too right so if somebody, let's say, is walking around with a measurement of 600 testosterone and then they optimize their their life and their sleep and their diet, they may get their number up to 800 and there's typically a corresponding rise in DHT also associated with that because DHT is where we get that from testosterone. But nonetheless, I wouldn't worry about it. And I think we're going to see in the next five to 10 years, creatine is going to get recommended to they're already starting to recommend it to the elderly. Yeah, it's like a wellness supplement. It's now. a wellness supplement. And now some people don't really get any derive any benefit from it. They, they're called non-responders. But you'll know within two to three weeks. Like start supplementing with it. And if you don't notice a difference, then it's probably not a big deal. But if you notice a little bit of a boost in strength, a better pump, that kind of stuff, then then go for it. Okay. Great. Thank you guys. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for calling in. Nice, Chuck. Yeah, that's the one. It's it's so crazy, right? Like of all of the promises of the supplement industry <laughs> of all the yeah, that, supplements that's the one golden goose the, in fact creatine is what saved the supplement industry it really is because of creatine the supplement industry exploded you can actually connect the growth of the supplement industry is that true absolutely really absolutely if you look at when creatine hit the market when eas i think was the first supp- the first company to really really market it and bring it out and it's mm. what crushed for mm-hmm. eas right they brought it out people took it Oh my God, it actually works, right? Yeah. And it, you can see how the supplement market really took off as a result. And it's backed by like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of really well made studies. It's been studied now for 20 something years. And it's, again, it's probably going to be recommended as yeah. a health supplement, general well, health supplement. It was interesting when it first came out, like, you know, the football team, we started to take it and it, it it, there was all this fear behind it because it actually worked. You know? yeah. And so like we got people coming in and warning us about, you know, all these different things that potentially like could happen. And it's like, you know, none of that was true, but it was lots of fear going into it. Like it was some kind of hidden steroid we didn't know about. Yeah. It's one of those few supplements that I cannot take for a while and then reintroduce it back into my routine. And I see a nice even increase in all my my weight mm-hmm. like strength wise just to, and and i also look fuller right so like i noticed that like my muscles look fuller or i look bigger because i'm probably hanging on to a little bit of extra water in there too so i think that those two things are like guaranteed and it's not one of those things that if i do for long periods i know you've like never stopped so i've been taking creatine Re- re- relatively consistently since I was 16. Right. That's for cool. a long time. And you probably only really notice when you come off and then go back on. I mean, I I've, I've come off a few times, but I'm pretty damn consistent yeah, with yeah. taking it. Yeah. And you know, it's funny. You look at the wellness space that talks all about mitochondrial health. Mm-hmm. You, I'm sure you've heard that, right? From all the oh, yeah. hackers and the, the biohackers and all that, right? One of the best things you could do- the powerhouse for, of the cell. Yeah. One of the best things you could do for the mitochondria of your cell is help them produce more ATP, which is one of their main sources of energy. That's what creatine does. And that's why studies are all now showing, oh my God, it helps with heart function. It helps with you know liver function. It's your cognitive function improves. So it's just one of those. And it's like, a again, it's like a miracle supplement in the sense that there is no other supplement that comes close. And it's really the only one that's ever lived up to the hype. Really no other supplement has lived up to the hype, uh, not even close to what creatine has. Now, to your point to the mitochondria health, I've always wanted to 
do this and test and be consistent with it. I've, I've played with it, but I haven't been consistent with it to really tease anything out. And that's the stacking it with the red light therapy. Since the red oh, yeah. light, doing it post workout, doing red light therapy, and then also taking your creatine, it'd be interesting to see if we if you noticed like an added boost it's, from that. It makes sense because they both do that right through yeah. different ways. Right. Our next caller is Jenny from California. Hey, Jenny, what's going on? How can we help you? Hey, thank you guys so much for taking me on here. So um, my question is, um, recently I am, uh, I've been dieting down for a tournament. I'm doing a jiu-jitsu tournament in a couple of weeks. I've lost about 12 pounds in the last six weeks or so. Um, and so uh, my tournament's coming up. And after my tournament, I'd like to learn more about reverse dieting because um, I've never heard about it before. I started listening to you guys recently. I've heard you talk about it and touch on it a couple of times, but I'd love to maintain where I'm at right now as far as my size and muscle mass and everything, but I definitely build up from here. Um, I've been eating at about 12 to 1500 calories to get down to this cut, get down to this right weight. Um, but I would love to, you know, um, continue building that so that I can eat like around 12, 2500, something like that for, for my size. Okay. I'm going to answer your question, but I, I have a few more questions for you before we get there sure. um how long have you been training jujitsu like what rank are you and then is what like is this your first tournament your fifth tournament like how far along are you and did you know sure. i have a purple belt yeah That's i've that. been uh, actually training jujitsu for about 20 years i'm a brown belt um i took some time off in between to have kids and kind of you know rest my body and all that stuff after having kids so um i've done several tournaments but this is kind of my um, second or third since coming back into training pretty seriously. And this one is kind of a, a really big tournament. There's a lot of people at my gym going and doing it. Um, if I can, you know, uh, place at this tournament, it's going to be a big deal. Oh, good. Is this the U S open? Yeah. Uh, no, it's masters masters. Oh, well, very unfortunately, cool. Sal can't help you cause he's only a purple belt. No, you know why I asked you that question, Jenny is because oftentimes I talk to athletes about cutting and when we have the conversation, it's it's better to not cut is typically where we end up with because as athletes, especially weight when we have weight classes and you know grappling tournaments, wrestling like you know those are all you know boxing right combat sports tend to have weight classes. We often believe that if we cut and go in a lighter weight class, that we'll have an advantage because we're now going against lighter people. But that advantage disappears if the cut is making you feel like crap or you're losing strength or it's really aggressive, or it affects your health uh, in a negative way. And I've seen this many times. I saw this in jujitsu. I also saw this in wrestling. And, you know, I remember my I had a cousin who uh, would wrestle and would cut so much weight. And I remember I convinced him once, like, don't cut weight and see how you feel. And he did better because he felt stronger uh, and more healthy. So that's why I brought this up. But I'm assuming with your experience, this is something you've done before. Um, so the the thing is, and, and I totally hear what you're saying. I used to wrestle in high school. And so I've been through this kind of ringer for a while. But um, the thing with women's weight classes is um, it's 175 and above um, is the weight class. And so I really wanted to get, I was about 186 um, and I was about 24% body fat. And so I knew I was carrying a little bit extra and I really wanted to get into that next weight class, which is um, 175, like the, the capper is 175 and you have to weigh in with your gi on and all that yeah. stuff. So I knew that I could get there and I'd much rather do that than fight a girl who's maybe 200 and 230 pounds that makes a lot um, at 180. Yeah. You don't want to go against, uh, what's her name? Gabby, whatever that girl Gabby name. Garcia. No, oh thank my you. God. I don't know if you guys have seen her, but she's no. a, oh dude, it's like, imagine me with long hair, but even bigger. Uh, okay. <laughs> wow. So, so, all right. So, okay. I'm, I'm so glad you said times. that. Okay. So reverse dieting essentially in a nutshell without getting going into the weeds is slowly increasing your calories over time while you continue um, your training. And trying to maintain your weight or maybe build a little bit of muscle um, so that your you know your weight stays roughly the same, but now you have a faster metabolism. At your weight and the amount of activity that you're doing, I noticed in your question, you're saying you're eating about 12 to 1500 calories. That's really low. That's that's really, really low. You should probably be at least, you know, at least 500 to, to 700 calories higher. So when you get out of this tournament, what you want to do is increase your calories by about a hundred a day, stay at that you know, caloric range, see how your body adjusts and then do it again. Um, if you see a big weight jump, then hold steady and wait a little bit before bumping again. What you really want to look for, Jenny, is am I, do I have more energy? Do I have more strength? Am I ma maintaining my fitness, my health? And also, and I didn't ask you this question, but also you may notice some positive hormonal changes. Oftentimes, especially with women, when they train really hard and cut their calories, 
they start to notice negative hormonal changes like lowered uh, libido, um, hot and cold, you know, body temperatures, and then they lose their period or they get very, um, you know, spotty with their period in the sense that it's not as consistent. So those are all signs that you're you're maybe doing too much, not eating enough. The reverse diet should really help regulate that. And ideally, especially at your level, what, where we would want to see you is for the next tournament, you don't really need to cut, but you're eating way more and you'll probably feel a lot better. So again, in a nutshell, it's just a slow increase while you monitor everything. So okay. I'll, I'll add two little things there. One, I think uh, it's a, a good investment to purchase Lane Norton's book. He actually has a, a book on reverse dieting or... It's like an ebook, uh, so it's it's relatively inexpensive. It has tremendous value. It has more specific details if you want to like follow a, a, a more dialed plan. Um, so I think that's uh, tremendously valuable. And then the other suggestion that anytime someone's reverse dieting, I I always like to really change up their strength training routine. So if you have a, a typical kind of program or tr uh, you know training routine that you follow. It's uh, when I reverse diets, when I really like to shake that up. So I don't know what that looks like for you, or I don't know if you're following a MAPS program currently, or you would be following a MAPS program, but really shaking it up from what the norm is for you. And that will help take any of those additional calories that you're now consuming and hopefully partition them over into building muscle instead of getting stored as fat because you're sending such a new, unique signal. And that could look mm -hmm. like uh, rep ranges and rest periods that could look like introducing exercises that maybe you never did before, like Turkish get-ups or single leg deadlifts, some good movements in there that you're just not used to doing that you're probably not very good at, but that'll be really good for you while you are also increasing your calories. Yeah. Jenny, what does your, or what, what did your strength training look like and what did it consist of besides you? Yeah. So I usually do, I actually haven't ran like a program like maps or anything like that. I do uh, boot camp kind of hit classes uh, with that cardio and lifting and that kind of stuff. So it's more of um, like, we'll have arm days or leg days or back and biceps, that kind of stuff. And and I enjoy lifting weights, but, um, but for this tournament, well, really in general, I've just been able to like work those classes in. Uh, but I've, like I said, I've just recently found you guys and really have enjoyed listening to you and would love to kind of work in on strength a little bit more. I joined a normal gym um, this last week, just to work on my cardio a little bit more, get some more um, treadmill time. Uh, but I think after this tournament, I'd love to focus a little bit more on that too. Oh man. I'm so glad Justin asked you that question. Okay. How, how many days a yeah, week? Let's you set her up, man. Yeah. How many days a week are you training jujitsu? Um, well, right now it's five. Um, okay. Before this comp training, it was maybe like two to three, just kind of okay. whenever I felt like doing it. If you want more endurance and stamina, do more jujitsu. There's nothing you can do in the gym. There's no other workouts you can do that will give you more applicable stamina. And you know this better than I do. You've been doing this for a long time. The type of endurance and stamina required for jujitsu is different than what you would get maybe in boxing or riding a bike or running. So if you want more stamina, then, then train more jujitsu or train your jujitsu in a way to add more stamina. So do more of like the king of the hill type matches or, you know, people are jumping on you every minute or every 30 seconds, you know, roll faster or harder or longer. That's where you'll get your stamina. When you're lifting or you're training outside of that, you want to do something that you can do with weights that you're not going to get from jujitsu. In other words, focus maybe on strength and maybe mobility, and that's really it. What you don't wanna do is try, and it's a big mistake a lot of athletes make, is they try to mimic their sport in the gym thinking it's gonna improve them at their sport. That's the wrong way to train. So a lot of times you'll see an athlete and they're like, I need more endurance in my sport, so now I'm gonna to go to the gym and I'm gonna train for more endurance. The only time that's applicable is if doing too much of your sport is starting to hurt you, like boxing, right? Boxers, they can't spar all the time, they get beat up a lot. The, the beauty of jujitsu, and again, you know this better than I do, is you can roll more and more. And yes, there's always that risk of injury, but it's not like boxing or football where at some point it's just you got to get more stamina outside of there because you just can't keep, you know, you can't keep getting pounded on. Do the jujitsu for the stamina. Train jujitsu in a way to improve stamina if that's what you want. And then when you go to the gym, focus on strength. So it's slow. It's lower reps. Get its full body workouts. Don't go super intense. The intensity should be safe for jujitsu. And then maybe some mobility work, which will all, always benefit your jujitsu. But don't train in the gym like you're mimicking your jujitsu. That's a huge mistake. Well, and now that we know this and we have more information, I, I'll be even more specific. And Doug, why don't you send her over MAPS Anabolic 
if you're going to do, if you're going to, after the tournament, if you're going to drop down to two to three times a week jujitsu, I would love to see you do two times a week of MAPS Anabolic. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I think that would be ideal. If you're going to do anything else in the gym more, I would do mobility stuff. Uh, if you want a great mobility routine that's kind of a full body thing that's free, you go to the um, MAPS Prime Pro webinar.com where I do like a 50 minute mobility routine that's basically head to toe some of my favorite movements, you could literally just follow that. That would be the only other thing I would do in addition to the two days a week of MAPS Anabolic. You do that in a reverse diet and watch how much oh, yeah. you'll, you'll, you'll build so much more muscle. Yeah, let's give a shout out to your school. Where do you train? Um, I'm at Synergy in Rockland. All right. Hey, I know exactly where that is. I have family up in Rockland. All right, good luck. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, we've got a big crew that's been training really hard for this tournament. So we're excited to get out there and and. Show the world. Good luck. Awesome. I hope you right. win. Yeah, hope good you do luck, well. Jenny. Thanks so much, you guys. Yeah. That's funny. I know that school. Uh, my, I have family that lives up in Rock. You know, it's it's so glad Justin asked that oh, question. Oh, man. That I, just I, that completely changed. Well, yeah, it alters the direction there. Yeah. I mean, I, that was the big mistake I made when yeah. I trained is that I thought I had to mimic my jiu-jitsu training in the gym. And nothing gave me more stamina in jiu-jitsu like doing more jiu-jitsu. And then when I went and said, you know, why don't I just – Go to the gym and focus on strength because I can't really do that in jujitsu. It was like night and day with yeah. the improvements that I made. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, I was addressing that same thing going into the offseason <laughs> next year with the football team. It's like, dude, we didn't spend enough time on the actual skills, uh, you mm -hmm. know, that we need to acquire. And like to do that, you can get all the conditioning you need by just like drilling these skills like over and over again. And it's gonna have like way more impact uh than just aimlessly kind of running and and going through the cardiovascular training. But yeah, to really focus in and hone in on the strength cycles and the strength and, and acquiring strength is going to take you so much further. I mean, the exciting part is if she takes the advice and does exactly what we just said, she's going to see tremendous results with the reverse diet. Oh yeah. I mean, if you, if you're, if she's used to doing, yeah. it'll be all, way more muscle, preserving. all that endurance and stamina training and circuit training for weights. And then we put her on a two day a week, full body strength routine while mm -hmm. also increasing calories. Look out. Yep. I mean, to she's primed for that to, like show her incredible results if she sticks to it totally our next caller is jeffrey from maryland jeffrey what's up man how can we help you hey guys how y'all doing today good how are you all right uh, appreciate you taking the call um so my question is um and i'll give you a little bit of my background um uh so i'm currently on maps anabolic um i've done i'm on my third time on that um so recently I got an injury on my back. I'm recovered from it. Um, but I feel like now for whatever reason, every time I go do like squats or something like deadlift, I feel like I get really sore the next day. Um, and I'm not sure if, if it's because I'm pushing myself too much. Um, and the prior, I was doing a lot of running I stopped doing that um, because I felt like my knees started hurting from all that too much. Um, and my next question is, so I'm trying to re-enlist in the military. Um, I'm still currently, I'm weighing more than what I used to, but I think it's more of a muscle that I've gained, not, not body fat. I still fit my same clothes. Um, but uh, for, for to join the military, you have to weigh a certain weight for your height and weight. So my question is, how do you, how do you lose weight and still gain muscle while having to meet the military's requirements? All right, let's start with the first one. I need to ask you: when you say you get really sore, do you mean just your muscles get sore, or the back injury starts to hurt again? So at first, um, I was going, I did lighter weights because my back was still hurting, but now it doesn't hurt. I just feel very sore. Okay, you just you might be going too hard and too uh, too heavy, or maybe too much volume. It also could be he's been. This is a third time around on Maps and a Ball too. Like his body might be screaming for something like Maps Performance and some mobility work too. Yeah, actually, that Maps Performance would be perfect for you. I think mm -hmm. that would be the perfect routine for you. And then as far as your the the fat loss, muscle gain type of stuff, that's going to be diet. I mean, you have you're going to have the good training if you follow Maps Performance. And by the way, if you don't have that, we'll send that to you. But that's okay, gonna, great. That's going to be diet, dude. And then to pass the military test, uh, you need to practice the actual test. There's nothing's going to mm -hmm. get you. Nothing's going to make you more capable of passing the test, like getting good at the actual test itself. It's and are you are you concerned with your ability to pass the test, or is it just more the weight thing? Do you feel pretty confident you'll pass the physical? 
No, so I've already been in the military. My concern is just uh, the weight. Uh, the weight, okay. because for my height, they require a certain weight, but I've gained more weight. So that would mean I would have to drop at least 15 more pounds in order to meet their requirements. And they do a lot of running. So I feel like that's another issue um, when it comes to like lifting weights as well. This is another reason why I'm glad Adam mentioned performance because it's going to be a lot more protective of the joints and that repetitive stress is going to add up. Yeah. Uh, obviously, yeah, like losing weight is going to help. Uh, you know, it's going to help you feel like lighter on your feet, like less, you know, stress in the joints. But um, to then reinforce that and go through those mobility sessions, especially, but like keep up, you know, your strength cycles is going to be, you know, a great complement to what you're doing. Yeah. How, how long do we have uh, until to lose that weight? So we have about 15 to 20 pounds we need to go down. How long do we have? Uh, there's time, but I would say it probably like three months. Oh, okay. Yeah, you got that. Oh, yeah, bro. Yeah. That's yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. You Jeff, just Jeff. What are the worst? What are the worst foods you eat on a regular basis? Like, what do you have any any issues with, like soda or sweets or processed foods or, you know, what are your worst foods? My worst foods has to be sweets, probably. Okay. Um, I'm pretty good at controlling myself, but there are there's days that it, it, it could get pretty bad. What does that mean? Like, what does that look like? And candy, how often? Candy? What is it? Well, usually, so I usually meal prep and I have everything ready. So as long as I eat, I'm, I'm good. Um, but then let's say I'll go out with some friends on a weekend and I'll have some cookies and one will turn into 10. Yeah. <laughs> and but for the most part, especially, um, I don't I don't always do that. Um, um, and I do meal prep every meal. So I'm pretty good on that. Um, you know what it sounds like? You know what it sounds like, Jeffrey? It sounds like, and I've seen, this is very common. Monday through Friday, you're on point. Saturday and Sunday, you go off a little bit. And so from a calorie perspective, what that tends to look like is, let's say somebody wants to, I don't know, let's say they want to lose a pound of body fat a week. So that's roughly, and this is loose, right? 3,500 calories of deficit a week. So what they do is they go, okay, I'm going to be at a 500 calorie deficit every day because that equals you know 2,500 calories. So Monday through Friday, they're good, right? So that's 2,500 calorie deficit so far. Then Saturday and Sunday, they go over by, I don't know, 1,000 calories each day, which is easy to do. It's very easy to do. I mean, 10 cookies could easily turn into 700 or 1,000 calories. Well, now your calorie deficit for the week is 500. So now it would take you weeks to notice one pound of fat loss. So those two days can make a big difference in how you know you, you start to lose body fat overall. If Sal's if Sal's right, and that is something that you struggle with is on weekends. I gave a tip to somebody else on a, one of these live questions a while back that I I think, uh, and I had a lot of response from people that said, "Oh my God, I started doing that. That was a huge game changer for me." And that was uh, if that's the case, like you you struggle with keeping your calories in check on the weekends. Sunday becomes the most important day of training and dieting. It's it's like a, a crazy hack that I figured out personally because I sugar and sweets are my thing. Weekends going over my also my thing. Also, if I were to take a day off of lifting or two, it would be Saturday or Sunday. And so if I build my routine around, okay, Sunday is the day I cannot miss, and that is the day that I'm going to be dialed in the most. It, it's crazy how the rest of the week kind of just falls in in order. Where if I don't do that on Sunday and I start off and I have a bad Sunday eating and then I go into Monday, it's harder to get me out of that on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay. And as far as uh, uh, the performance, uh, mass performance, would would you say include that with anabolic or just do no. performance? No, it's a new program. It's a whole new program. Just whole follow program. performance. And it's got oh, the, so no more anabolics. Yeah, no more no more anabolic. Leave that, leave that, or you mean anabolics like steroids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's why you're 200 pounds now. Yeah. <laughs> you're on that, you're on that D ball. No, yeah, yeah. No, MAPS Performance is its own program. So you're going to, once we send that to you, you could scrap it, MAPS Anabolic and do MAPS Performance. I think it'll be better for what your goals are. Okay. Sounds great. All right, man. Thanks for calling in. All right. Thank you. Take have a great, great day, guys. Thank you. Have a good one. How many times did you guys have that with clients where, they're really good Monday through Friday, mm -hmm. Saturday and Sunday. They, according to them, they go off a little bit, and but they don't realize like how much damage those going off. That's days why this. Yet. I mean, that was a big thing for me. <laughs> uh, I remember I shared a long time ago. I shared on the podcast the the introduction to the body bug. 
Yeah. And before that, we didn't have a good tool to be able to kind of get a good guesstimation of your metabolism, right? Or what you're burning on a regular basis. And it, and I was so dialed Monday through Friday. Like I ate perfect. I trained hard. I was moving all day, training 10 to 12 clients, like super active, burned a tremendous amount of calories, 5,000 plus calories a day. I was at back then. And then Saturday and Sunday, there was times where I could drop all the way to 25, half. Yeah, you're just sitting on your ass. And that's also the day I'd say, hey, it's Saturday, it's Sunday. I'm going to have yeah. some pizza and watch football, or I'm going to you know, have a beer or two. Like, I would go off the diet. I would possibly not train, and I would be burning like 50% the calories. So not much room for error. I could I could easily go over. And that the little bit I was going over on Saturday or Sunday was enough to cancel mm -hmm. all the work I was doing the week. And that was what that's how the Sunday can't take it off thing happened for me. I said, okay, well, I'm just gonna make myself dialed. Sunday's gonna become my best day. It's no longer gonna be my worst day. It'll become my best day. And what ended up happening was if I set the tone on Sunday, the rest of the week, I ended up having a great week. Yeah, no, it makes a huge difference. I, when you said that, I know we got messages from people who mm -hmm. were like, oh, and it's the psychological piece of totally. it. Totally. Yeah, totally. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free guides. They can help you with all your fitness goals. We, I mean, we wrote guides for muscle building and fat loss and health and mobility. We have guides for personal trainers as well to help you become a better trainer. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is at Mind Pump Justin on Instagram. I'm at Mind Pump Sal. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam.